what have you got in your hand there, Lee? Well, a couple of rings. So luxury goods. It's not a market we often think about in our industry. Okay, so how would you go about making these on a machine like this? Well, of course, rather than micron precision, although they need to be precise, aesthetics are what we're looking for here. So on this particular one, if you like, there's a, a form around the outside. It's not so easy to produce. The machine's got to be synchronized between the spindle and the UC axis to be able to produce the form in one attitude and then another attitude. So it's pretty complex machining. Now, what is the challenges other than that with making, I mean, I'm, I've got lots of things running through my mind, but maybe you could um, explain how difficult and what you have to do to overcome some obstacles. Well, another challenge that we have is this one here. You've got your rows of diamonds and each one of these positions is effectively parametrically programmed so that you've got the perfect size for each of the different diamond settings. Of course, then you've got the engraving on the inside as well. So when these are programmed, the guys just pull out from the diamonds they're gonna fit the right parameters in the machine. So we produce the perfect setting for each stone. So again, you know, you think a rig is just a little turn. And knowing item. how much money you've got, it'd be big diamonds, I'd assume, <laughs> in yours. And how do you actually machine it then on this uh, Boomer Tech machine? Well, this is a 191 Neo machine. So you've got a main spindle and a sub spindle. So we start with side one, with all the machinery on the first side in the main spindle. The, 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 the attitude of the spindle, whether you're turning, milling, drilling, gives you access to all the features. And then we pick up on the sub spindle, part off and finish side two. So we, we machine a complete component in, in one setup. And what about the surface finish? How do you achieve such a good surface finish? You, are you kind of dry or wet? No, 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 we, we cut wet. So we, we, we cut with knee toil. Uh, and of course the swarf is important because we're, we're, they, these are valuable metals, either gold, white, gold, platinum, whatever. So it's as important that we collect the swarf as we actually produce the part. And, and, and there's no polishing on these then? They will come off the machine finished. They come off the machine finished, there may be some light polishing after the stones have been set, but yeah, they're a finished product off the machine. And how do you handle that swarf thing? Give us a little bit of detail. Well, you don't have a swarf conveyor, so what we have is a chute system into a tray. So the swarf goes through a polymo filter, and the polymo filters change for the different metallic types into a tray that's pulled out. The swarf's then taken nicely and collected because the swarf's as valuable as the ring. So is that for me, then? No, these are mine. They're only brass.